Animal Nutrition, Wikipedia Article Audio Animal nutrition focuses on the dietary needs of animals, primarily those in agriculture and food production, but also in zoos, aquariums, and wildlife management. There are seven major classes of nutrients, carbohydrates, fats, fiber, minerals, proteins, vitamins, and water. Fat Essential fatty acids The macronutrients provide structural material and energy. Some of the structural material can be used to generate energy internally, and in either case it is measured in joules or calories. Carbohydrates and proteins provide 17 kJ approximately of energy per gram, while fats provide 37 kJ per gram, though the net energy from either depends on such factors as absorption and digestive effort, which vary substantially from instance to instance. Vitamins, minerals, fiber, and water do not provide energy, but are required for other reasons. A third-class dietary material, fiber, seems also to be required, for both mechanical and biochemical reasons, though the exact reasons remain unclear. Molecules of carbohydrates and fats consist of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. Carbohydrates range from simple monosaccharides to complex polysaccharides. Fats are triglycerides, made of assorted fatty acid monomers bound to glycerol backbone. Some fatty acids, but not all, are essential in the diet, they cannot be synthesized in the body. Protein molecules contain nitrogen atoms in addition to carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. The fundamental components of protein are nitrogen-containing amino acids, some of which are essential in the sense that humans cannot make them internally. Some of the amino acids are convertible to glucose and can be used for energy production just as ordinary glucose. By breaking down existing protein, some glucose can be produced internally, the remaining amino acids are discarded primarily as urea in urine. This occurs normally only during prolonged starvation. Other dietary substances found in plant foods are not identified as essential nutrients but appear to impact health in both positive and negative ways. Most foods contain a mix of some or all of the nutrient classes, together with other substances. Some nutrients can be stored internally while others are required more or less continuously. Poor health can be caused by a lack of required nutrients or, in extreme cases, too much of a required nutrient. For example, both salt provides sodium and chloride, both essential nutrients, but will cause illness or even death in too large amounts. A molecule of dietary fat typically consists of several fatty acids, bonded to a glycerol. They are typically found as triglycerides. Fats may be classified as saturated or unsaturated depending on the detailed structure of the fatty acids involved. Saturated fats have all of the carbon atoms. In their fatty acid chains bonded to hydrogen atoms, whereas unsaturated fats have some of these carbon atoms double bonded, so their molecules have relatively fewer hydrogen atoms than a saturated fatty acid of the same length. Unsaturated fats may be further classified as monounsaturated or polyunsaturated. Furthermore, depending on the location of the double bond in the fatty acid chain, Unsaturated fatty acids are classified as omega-3 or omega-6 fatty acids. Trans fats are a type of unsaturated fat with trans isomer bonds, these are rare in nature and in foods from natural sources, they are typically created in an industrial process called hydrogenation. Many studies have shown that unsaturated fats, particularly monounsaturated fats, 
are best in the human diet. Saturated fats, typically from animal sources, are next, while trans fats are to be avoided. Saturated and some trans fats are typically solid at room temperature, while unsaturated fats are typically liquids. Trans fats are very rare in nature, but have properties useful in the food processing industry, such as rancid resistance. Fiber Most fatty acids are non-essential, meaning the body can produce them as needed, generally from other fatty acids and always by expending energy to do so. However, in humans at least two fatty acids are essential and must be included in the diet. An appropriate balance of essential fatty acids omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids seems also important for health, though definitive experimental demonstration has been elusive. Both of these omega long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids are substrates for a class of eicosanoids known as prostaglandins, which have roles throughout the human body. They are hormones, in some respects. The omega-3 icosapentaenoic acid, which can be made in the human body from the omega-3 essential fatty acid alpha-linolenic acid, or taken in through marine food sources, serves as a building block for series 3 prostaglandins. The omega-6 dehomogamolinolenic acid serves as a building block for series 1 prostaglandins whereas arachidonic acid serves as a building block for series 2 prostaglandins. Both DGLA and AA can be made from the omega-6 linoleic acid in the human body, or can be taken indirectly through food. An appropriately balanced intake of omega-3 and omega-6 partly determines the relative production of different prostaglandins. One reason a balance between omega-3 and omega-6 is believed important for cardiovascular health. In industrialized societies, people typically consume large amounts of processed vegetable oils, which have reduced amounts of the essential fatty acids along with too much of omega-6 fatty acids relative to omega-3 fatty acids. The conversion rate of omega-6 DGLA to AA largely determines the production of the prostaglandins PG-1 and PG-2. Omega-3 EPA prevents AA from being released from membranes, thereby skewing prostaglandin balance away from pro-inflammatory PG-2 toward anti-inflammatory PG-1. Moreover, the conversion of DGLA to AA is controlled by the enzyme delta-5 desaturase, which in turn is controlled by hormones such as insulin and glucagon. The amount and type of carbohydrates consumed, along with some types of amino acid, can influence processes involving insulin, glucagon, and other hormones. Therefore the ratio of omega-3 versus omega-6 has wide effects on general health, and specific effects on immune function and inflammation, and mitosis. Protein Good sources of essential fatty acids include most vegetables, nuts, seeds, and marine oils. Some of the best sources are fish flax seed oils, soybeans, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, and walnuts. Dietary fiber is a carbohydrate that is incompletely absorbed in humans and in some animals. Like all carbohydrates, when it is metabolized it can produce 4 calories of energy per gram. But in most circumstances, it accounts for less than that because of its limited absorption and digestibility. Dietary fiber consists mainly of cellulose, a large carbohydrate polymer that is indigestible because humans do not have the required enzymes to disassemble it. There are two subcategories, soluble and insoluble fiber. Whole grains, fruits, and vegetables are good sources of dietary fiber. Fiber is important to digestive health and is thought to reduce the risk of colon cancer. 
for mechanical reasons it can help in alleviating both constipation and diarrhea. Fiber provides bulk to the intestinal contents, and insoluble fiber especially stimulates peristalsis the rhythmic muscular contractions of the intestines which move digesta along the digestive tract. Some soluble fibers produce a solution of high viscosity, this is essentially a gel, which slows the movement of food through the intestines. Additionally, fiber, perhaps especially that from whole grains, may help lessen insulin spikes and reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes. Proteins are the basis of many animal body structures. They also form the anisms which control chemical reactions throughout the body. Each molecule is composed of amino acids which are characterized by inclusion of nitrogen and sometimes sulfur. The body requires amino acids to produce new proteins and to replace damaged proteins. As there is no protein or amino acid storage provision, amino acids must be present in the diet. Excess amino acids are discarded, typically in the urine. For all animals, some amino acids are essential and some are non-essential. About 20 amino acids are found in the human body, and about 10 of these are essential, and therefore must be included in the diet. A diet that contains adequate amounts of amino acids is particularly important in some situations, during early development and maturation, pregnancy, lactation, or injury. A complete protein source contains all the essential amino acids, an incomplete protein source lacks one or more of the essential amino acids. Minerals It is possible to combine two incomplete protein sources to make a complete protein source, and characteristic combinations are the basis of distinct cultural cooking traditions. Sources of dietary protein include meats, tofu, and other soy products, eggs, grains, legumes, and dairy products such as milk and cheese. A few amino acids from protein can be converted into glucose and used for fuel through a process called gluconeogenesis, this is done in quantity only during starvation. The amino acids remaining after such conversion are discarded. Macrominerals Dietary minerals are the chemical elements required by living organisms, other than the four elements carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen that are present in nearly all organic molecules. The term mineral is archaic, since the intent is to describe simply the less common elements in the diet. Some are heavier than the four just mentioned including several metals, which often occur as ions in the body. Some dietitians recommend that these be supplied from foods in which they occur naturally, or at least as complex compounds, or sometimes even from natural and organic sources. Some are absorbed much more readily in the ionic forms found in such sources. On the other hand, minerals are often artificially added to the diet as supplements, the most famous is likely iodine in iodized salt which prevents goiter. Trace Minerals Many elements are essential in relative quantity, they are usually called bulk minerals. Some are structural, but many play a role as electrolytes. Elements with recommended dietary allowance greater than 200 mg slash day are, in alphabetical order. Many elements are required in trace amounts, usually because they play a catalytic role in enzymes. Some trace mineral elements are, in alphabetical order. Vitamins As with the minerals discussed above, some vitamins are recognized as essential nutrients, necessary in the diet for good health. Certain vitamin-like compounds that are recommended in the diet, such as carnitine, are thought useful for survival and health, 
but these are not essential dietary nutrients because the human body has some capacity to produce them from other compounds. Moreover, thousands of different phytochemicals have recently been discovered in food, which may have desirable properties including antioxidant activity, experimental demonstration has been suggestive but inconclusive. Other essential nutrients not classed as vitamins include essential amino acids, choline, essential fatty acids, and the minerals discussed in the preceding section. Vitamin deficiencies may result in disease conditions, goiter, scurvy, osteoporosis, impaired immune system, disorders of cell metabolism, certain forms of cancer, symptoms of premature aging, and poor psychological health, among many others. Excess of some vitamins is also dangerous to health, and animal nutrition researchers have managed to establish safe levels for some common companion animals. For at least one vitamin, B6, toxicity begins at levels not far above the required amount. Deficiency or excess of minerals can also have serious health consequences. About 70% of the non-fat mass of the human body is made of water. Analysis of adipose tissue in relation to body weight loss in man. Retrieved from Journal of Applied to Function Properly, the body requires between 1 and 7 liters of water per day to avoid dehydration. The precise amount depends on the level of activity, temperature, humidity, and other factors. With physical exertion and heat exposure, water loss increases and daily fluid needs will eventually increase as well. It is not fully clear how much water intake is needed by healthy people, although some experts assert that 8-10 glasses of water daily is the minimum to maintain proper hydration. The notion that a person should consume 8 glasses of water per day cannot be traced to a credible scientific source. The effect of, greater or lesser, water intake on weight loss and on constipation is also still unclear. The original water intake recommendation in 1945 by the Food and Nutrition Board of the National Research Council read, an ordinary standard for diverse persons is 1 milliliter for each calorie of food. Most of this quantity is contained in prepared foods. The latest dietary reference intake report by the United States National Research Council recommended, generally, 2.7 liters of water total for women and 3.7 liters for men. Specifically, Pregnant and breastfeeding women need additional fluids to stay hydrated. According to the Institute of Medicine who recommend that, on average, women consume 2.2 liters and men 3.0 liters this is recommended to be 2.4 liters for pregnant women and 3 liters for breastfeeding women since an especially large amount of fluid is lost during nursing. People can drink far more water than necessary while exercising, however, putting them at risk of water intoxication, which can be fatal. In particular large amounts of deionized water are dangerous. Water Normally, about 20% of water intake comes in food, while the rest comes from drinking water and assorted beverages. Water is excreted from the body in multiple forms, including urine and feces, sweating, and by water vapor in the exhaled breath. Other Nutrients Other micronutrients include antioxidants and phytochemicals. These substances are generally more recent discoveries which have not yet been recognized as vitamins or as required. Phytochemicals may act as antioxidants, but not all phytochemicals are antioxidants. Calcium, a common electrolyte, but also needed structurally structural, chlorine as chloride ions, very common electrolyte, see sodium, below, magnesium, 
required for processing ADP and related reactions, phosphorus, required component of bones, essential for energy processing, potassium, a very common electrolyte, sodium, a very common electrolyte, not generally found in dietary supplements, despite being needed in large quantities, because the ion is very common in food, typically as sodium. Chloride, or common salt, sulfur for three essential amino acids and therefore many proteins. Antioxidants are a recent discovery. As cellular metabolism slash energy production requires oxygen, potentially damaging compounds known as free radicals can form. Most of these are oxidizers and some react very strongly. For normal cellular maintenance, growth, and division, these free radicals must be sufficiently neutralized by antioxidant compounds. Some are produced by the human body with adequate precursors and those the body cannot produce may only be obtained in the diet via direct sources or produced by the body from other compounds. Phytochemicals and their subgroup polyphenols are the majority of antioxidants, about 4,000 are known. Different antioxidants are now known to function in a cooperative network, e.g. vitamin C can reactivate free radical containing glutathione or vitamin E by accepting the free radical itself, and so on. Some antioxidants are more effective than others at neutralizing different free radicals. Some cannot neutralize certain free radicals. Some cannot be present in certain areas of free radical development. When interacting with a free radical, some antioxidants produce a different free radical compound that is less dangerous or more dangerous than the previous compound. Having a variety of antioxidants allows any byproducts to be safely dealt with by more efficient antioxidants in neutralizing a free radical's butterfly effect. A growing area of interest is the effect upon human health of trace chemicals, collectively called phytochemicals. These nutrients are typically found in edible plants, especially colorful fruits and vegetables, but also other organisms including seafood, algae, and fungi. The effects of phytochemicals increasingly survive rigorous testing by prominent health organizations. One of the principal classes of phytochemicals are polyphenol antioxidants, chemicals which are known to provide certain health benefits to the cardiovascular system and immune system. These chemicals are known to downregulate the formation of reactive oxygen species, key chemicals in cardiovascular disease. Cobalt required for biosynthesis of vitamin B12 family of coenzymes copper required component of many redox enzymes, including cytochrome C oxidase, chromium required for sugar metabolism, iodine required not only for the biosynthesis of thyroxine, but probably, for other important organs as breast, stomach, salivary glands, thymus etc., for this reason iodine is needed in larger quantities than others in this list and sometimes classified with the macrominerals, iron required for many enzymes. And for hemoglobin and some other proteins, manganese, molybdenum required for xanthine oxidase and related oxidases, nickel present in urease, selenium required for peroxidase, vanadium, zinc required for several enzymes such as carboxypeptidase, liver alcohol dehydrogenase, carbonic anhydrase. Perhaps the most rigorously tested phytochemical is zeaxanthin, a yellow pigmented carotenoid present in many yellow and orange fruits and vegetables. Repeated studies have shown a strong correlation between ingestion of zeaxanthin and the prevention and treatment of age-related macular degeneration. Less rigorous studies have proposed a correlation between zeaxanthin intake and cataracts. A second carotenoid, lutein, 
has also been shown to lower the risk of contracting AMD. Both compounds have been observed to collect in the retina when ingested orally, and they serve to protect the rods and cones against the destructive effects of light. Antioxidants Phytochemicals Ash Intestinal bacterial flora Another carotenoid, beta-cryptoxanthin, appears to protect against chronic joint inflammatory diseases, such as arthritis. While the association between serum blood levels of beta-cryptoxanthin and substantially decreased joint disease has been established, neither a convincing mechanism for such protection nor a cause and effect have been rigorously studied. Similarly, a red phytochemical, lycopene, has substantial credible evidence of negative association with development of prostate cancer. The correlations between the ingestion of some phytochemicals and the prevention of disease are, in some cases, enormous in magnitude. Even when the evidence is obtained, translating it to practical dietary advice can be difficult and counterintuitive. Lutein, for example, occurs in many yellow and orange fruits and vegetables and protects the eyes against various diseases. However, it does not protect the eye nearly as well as zeaxanthin, and the presence of lutein in the retina will prevent zeaxanthin uptake. Additionally, evidence has shown that the lutein present in egg yolk is more readily absorbed than the lutein from vegetable sources, possibly because of fat solubility. At the most basic level, the question should you eat eggs is complex to the point of dismay, including misperceptions about the health effects of cholesterol and egg yolk, and its saturated fat content. As another example, lycopene is prevalent in tomatoes. It is more highly concentrated, however in processed tomato products such as commercial pasta sauce, or tomato soup, than in fresh healthy tomatoes. Yet, such sauces tend to have high amounts of salt, sugar, other substances a person may wish or even need to avoid. The following table presents phytochemical groups and common sources, arranged by family. Anti-inflammatory Though not really a nutrient as such, an entry for ash is sometimes found on nutrition labels, especially for pet food. This entry measures the weight of inorganic material left over after the food is burned for two hours at 600 degrees Celsius. Thus, it does not include water, fiber, and nutrients that provide calories, but it does include some nutrients, such as minerals. There have been some concerns that too much ash may contribute to feline urological syndrome in domestic cats. It is now also known that animal intestines contain a large population of gut flora. In humans, these include species such as Bacteroides, L. acidophilus and E. coli, among many others. They are essential to digestion and are also affected by the food we eat. Bacteria in the gut perform many important functions for humans, including breaking down and aiding in the absorption of otherwise indigestible food, stimulating cell growth, repressing the growth of harmful bacteria, training the immune system to respond only to pathogens, producing vitamin B12, and defending against some infectious diseases.